Johnson Flash program with Fibber McGee and Molly. Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat bring you Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick LeGrand, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsman and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> Fibber and Molly join us in a moment. More women each day are hearing the big news about Johnson's Glow Coat. It's now positively water repellent. That means that at last there's a self-polishing floor wax whose shine doesn't melt away at the touch of moisture. Water, spilled food or drinks, tracked in mud or snow, just whisk right off that hard glow coat surface. Yes, and here's the big news behind the big news. Because it's positively water repellent, Johnson's Glow Coat now lasts up to four times longer. For you don't wipe up the wax when you wipe up water. You can even damp mop a Glow Coat protected surface repeatedly without killing its shine. So you don't have to do your floors nearly so often. Not if you use Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat. Tomorrow, start giving your floors and linoleum this work-saving protection. Get Glow Coat. It's in the regular package, remember. No change in the container, but there's a wonderful difference inside. Mrs. McGee likes life quiet and peaceful. Mr. McGee likes things jumpy. So far today, with himself out of the house, Mrs. McGee has had it her way. But, oh, brother, look at him galloping up the front steps now, bursting with excitement as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. Hey, Molly, Molly, the hospital. They lost him. Lost a lot of radium last night. Radium. Imagine a hospital losing radium. Now, now, night. now. <laughs> Take it easy, dearie. Mother's right here. <laughs> What's this about lost radium? Yeah, at the hospital. Three tubes of it got carried out in the waste paper basket. Three rays of tubium. Uh, the tubes of radium. <laughs> yeah, in the paste paper. The waste paper. They lost it at the oh, hospital. Oh, McGee, for <laughs> goodness sake. Stop jumping up and down. Talk slowly. Now, where did you hear this? From Doc Gamble. Uh, from Doc Gamble. <laughs> I and Doc were in his office arguing about last month's bill, like always. When his nurse calls him to the phone, see, she says it's the hospital and mutters something about three tubes of radium got carried out in the waste paper last oh, night. Oh, dear. Well, that is serious. Yes. What did the doctor say? Well, when he seen I was listening, he put on a kind of a casual air, like, like half a million bucks worth of radium was nothing, see. Half a million dollars for Yeah. It. Heavenly days. Think of all the alarm clocks it took to scrape that much radium off. <laughs> That's it. When I tried to get the details out of him, he turned kind of pale. You know, like he always does when I offer to help him. Yeah. I can understand that. And then he told me to then he told me to shut up and he hightailed it for the hospital. If you can call that underslung waddle of docks hightailing. <laughs> Oh, the poor man. He must be worried to death. You said it, he's worried. If the newspapers hear about the sloppy way that hospital, the Doc Gamble is the head doctor of, is run, they'll have him disbarred from medical practice. Betcha. They'll unsmock him. That's what they'll do. <laughs> Give me the phone. Here. Which paper are you going to call first? No paper. No paper. I'm going to call Doc and tell him not to worry. I'll save his job for him. I'm going to track down that missing radium. Well, it shouldn't be too hard to find, dearie. Just wait till the night and hunt around till you find something that glows in the dark, and that's your radium. Unless it turns out to be Uncle Dennis, because he sometimes has a glow that yeah. you can see. It. <laughs> I can't wait till night, Tootsie. I'm going to do this scientific in the daytime. I'm going to rent me a Geiger counter on the way to the hospital. And... Hello, operator. Give me the hospital. Urgent. Hello, hospital. Give me Doc Gamble. Hello, Doc. This is McGee. Huh? What do you mean I took you away from the operating table? Oh, dear. I hope you didn't make him drop a stitch. <laughs> ah, relax, Doc. That patient won't get away. The interns will hold him down. Look, did you find that lost item? 
In the waste paper? The three tubes of... You didn't, eh? Well, don't you worry, Ducky. I'll track it down. I'll save your job for you, boy. I'll... What? Why don't I do what? Hey, watch your language, Fatso. There's a lady present. (laughs) What'd he say? Ah, poor old Doc so upset he don't know what he was saying, Molly. He didn't even pronounce it right anyhow. (laughs) Maybe it was Latin, you know. Doctors always... My George, old Doc's too good a friend to let this happen to. Besides, we ought to humanity to get that radium back, Molly. Grab your hat while I back the car off. History, here we come. All right, That the best Geiger counter you got, bud? This is the latest model on the market, sir. Light and easy to carry, very sensitive to radioactivity. Oh, uh, my husband isn't interested in radioactivity now, sir. In fact, he's thinking seriously of television now. (laughs) No, no, (laughs) this is different, Molly. Uh, Well, that looks okay, bud. How do you work it? Simply turn on this switch here, and when I pass this active ore in front of it, listen. Hmm. Oh, well, heavenly day. Isn't that amazing, McGee? What makes it do that, sir? Well, it's uh, quite a complicated thing to explain. Yeah, it's rather scientific, Molly. You see, in looking for radium, the first thing you got to remember is that radium is a combination of two words. Dium, which is an ore, and rays, which it gives off in the dark. <laughs> Thus, we call it radium, you see. Isn't that cute? Yes. I never heard that slant on it. Check me if I'm wrong on this, bud. You see, in scientific language, Molly, those little rays are called Geigers. Geigers? Geigers? (laughs) This little machine counts those things, hence the name Geiger Counter. (laughs) Well, uh... Hang it on my shoulder, Geiger. we got to get over to the hospital. Uh, uh, yes, I'll phone ahead so they have a bed ready for you. <laughs> Raise, Geiger. I'll leave the car right here by the ambulance entrance, Molly. We'll go in the basement door. Here's the Geiger thing. Oh, thanks. Boy, will I ever track that radium down with this baby. I'll go through that waste paper like a bulldozer. Oh, now hurry up, kiddo. Now, if this janitor in here gets nosy, just say nothing. I'll handle him. I'll tell him I'm a government man. Oh, hey, bud. Uh, You the janitor? I'm a treasury investigator, and I want to find... Well, well, hello, Mrs. Hello, McGee. Holy! Holy, my gosh, what are you doing here? Well, the same to you, McGee, and many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you were with the treasury, don't tell nobody. You want to start loans on the bank? <laughs> Never mind that, only Look, when did you ever treasury investigator, McGee? Oh, last year, if you want to know. I investigated the treasury at the Elks Club when more troops left town, didn't I? <laughs> Hey, that, that's right, McGee. Sure. I, I apologize. <laughs> you should have seen him trying to balance the books methods on the end of a pool cue. <laughs> I heard about it, Ollie. <laughs> but are you working here now? I thought you well, were... Well, useful today, methods. You see, I'm working to York for my cousin Sven. He gets accident and they took him to the hospital. Oh. Took him to the hospital? This is the hospital. Uh, sure, but Sven works here every day, McGee. And <laughs> when he gets accident, he wants to change the scenery. <laughs> So he went to emergency hospital with something in his eye. Oh, that's painful. What did he get, a cinder in his eye? No, Mrs. Six tons of coal. Oh. <laughs> Six tons of coal in his eye? All the time I tell Sven not to take a nap under the coal chute. <laughs> Yesterday he took nap and gets waked up with six tons of coal. Oh. Dear. Mm, hard cold, too. <laughs> <laughs> Everything looked pretty black to Sven when we dug him out. Yeah. Well, that's all very sad, Ollie, but I got no time to gab. Where do you keep your waste paper? Where do you keep it? Well, come on, Ollie. Where's the waste paper been? The waste paper ain't been no place, McGee. 
Oh, it's your spoon someplace. What's that, Ollie? The city picked it up in the truck this morning, missus. What? There it's going, I don't know. But it ain't been yet. They used to up the alley two hours ago. Oh, my gosh, it's gone. We got to track that truck, Molly. Yeah. Come on down to City Hall. Find out where they take the paper. Billy Mills, the orchestra, and a dream is a wish your heart makes. I'm not hiding any atom bomb. Sit down, dearie. You're upsetting his honor. Uh, now, give me that again, McGee, slowly. You want me to find out what? Find out what your city trucks do with the waste paper they picked up at the hospital a while ago. I got to catch that waste paper before something happens to it. I thought that's what you said. <laughs> Look, McGee, the governor of this state and two federal judges are waiting in my front office, and you have the Oh, nerve. we really haven't time to meet them now, Mr. No. <laughs> You're awful sweet to think of it, but we have to hurry. Yeah, get on the phone, will you, boy? This is urgent. I'd like to explain what it's all about, but I can't do it now. Security reasons, you understand? The only security you will ever be connected with, McGee, is social. <laughs> uh, you're not saying that just because you admire me. If I had my way, I... Miss Gimlet. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I tried to stop him, but he just... Uh, never mind that now. Never mind. Call Mr. Brush in sanitation and uh, find out what the city does with the waste paper they collected today. Specifically, the hospital waste paper. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and snap it up, Gimme. Oh, McGee, put that Geiger thing down, will you? Stop pacing the floor. Well, I can't seem to relax, Molly. I'm nervous. You're nervous? Ha! <laughs> I've never been so upset. Hey, have you got any uranium fillings in your teeth? <laughs> this thing gets noisy every time I point it. No, no, I get that Geiger counter out of my face. Huh. Sit down, will you? No, no, don't sit down. You won't have time. Oh, thanks. I'll sit on your desk here and tell you how. To... Yes, Miss Gimlet. Uh, uh, Mr. Brush says that particular truck makes stops in North Whistle Vista, East Whistle Vista, West Whistle Vista, and 14th and Oak. <laughs> Thank you. Did you get that, McGee? Yeah, 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 I got it. Well, come on, Molly. Thanks a lot for your trouble, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thanks, Latriv. I hated to bust in on you like this, but I knew you wouldn't want an old friend like me to wait outside with the peasants. Uh, <laughs> you're about to make me very happy, McGee. I am? Yes. You've heard the old saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder? Oh, sure. Well, get absent so I can be fond of you. <laughs> truck so far, McGee. This is North Whistle Vista, all right, but we don't know where he stopped. Well, keep watching, Molly. 
Oh, gun it, we got to catch up with that radium before they dump it in that paper mill. <laughs> Ask that woman there. Ask her if she knows anything. Uh, pardon me, madam. Uh, have you seen anything of a city paper truck around here? No, I ain't, lady. We don't get the city papers out here. We can't read no how. <laughs> You're lucky, sis. <laughs> well, I don't know, mister. Uh, six of my boys got telegrams in 1942. In 42? Yep. Western Union ladies said they were from the draft board. We'd sure like to get somebody to read them to us. <laughs> well, don't crowd your luck, sis. <laughs> Where that trucker went to, Molly? If we don't catch that guy before he dumps that... Hold it, dearie. Hold it. There's a city truck. Oh. Hard. Boy, got to get them brakes fixed. <laughs> oh, look at on that truck. City of Wistful Vista. I hope this is it because... Oh. What is it? Garbage. Four miles east of South Wistful Vista. 3 p.m. Keep watching, Molly. You watch that side, and I'll watch this side. Oh, 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 oh heavenly days, Mickey. <laughs> slow down, will you? I can't slow down. Can't slow down. I got to get there before I run out of gas. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll head him off at the paper mill at South Whistle Vista. You'd better stop for gas if you think you're... Oh. Out of gas. Of all the dirty, rotten, miserable, unfortunate, horrible, lousy, half a million dollars worth of radium on its way to be ruined, and of all the dirty, rotten, unfortunate... You miserable. said that. Yes. Yeah. You said that, dearie. Now, wait a minute. Let me read this signboard here. Signboard? What does it say? It says, next time, try the train. Mm. <laughs> Three miles from South Wistful Vista, a foot, 4 p.m., and anywhere, anytime. Your wood floors, linoleum, need protection against dirt, dust, and dampness. Use Johnson's great self-polishing glow coat, which is now positively water repellent. Johnson's glow coat now lasts up to four times longer. You can damp mop it time after time without mopping up the wax. Stays on and it stays bright. Now hurry up, Silo. I gotta catch that radium. And remember, all the glow coat on your dealer's shelves right now is water repellent glow coat. It's in the same familiar container, all oh, but what a difference inside. It's Johnson's Water Repellent Local. Dread the dead, dread of luck. Out of gas. Way out here in South Wistful Vista. Standing beside our own car out of gas. Imagine Fibber McGee and Molly being out of gas. <laughs> Why don't somebody stop? Hey! People just don't seem to pick up hitchhikers nowadays, dearie. Oh, this is awful. We got to get to that Plymouth paper mill, Molly. Hey, hey, here comes somebody. It's another truck, McGee. Uh, truck drivers aren't allowed to pick up passengers. Their insurance won't let them. Hey, hey, he's stopping. Oh, boy, he's stopping. <laughs> oh, isn't this wonderful? Yeah. Oh, thanks for stopping, bud. Well, hello, folks. Oh. <laughs> days, it's Mr. Wimple. My gosh, Wally Wimple. Boy, am I glad to see you, Wimp. Give us a lift? Sure, hop in. Well, what do you know about this, Molly? Imagine Wimp driving a truck. Yes, this is certainly a pleasant surprise, Mr. Wimple. Have you been at it long? Just this week, Mrs. McGee. Seems so strange to be driving along without somebody sitting behind me yelling, Wallace, go that way. Wallace, hurry up. Wallace, slow down. Wallace! <laughs> Mm, so strange and so peaceful. <laughs> well, we're going to South Whistle Vista, Wimp, so if you're heading that way... Oh, we'll... yes, indeedy. Hang on, folks. I'm going to highball down the highway with this rig really rolling. Meet me. Yahoo! <laughs> I hate to put you out of here in the edge of town, folks, but 
My boss would have a fit. Oh, you? now, you think nothing of it. That's all right, Mr. Wimple. This is wonderful. Sure. As long as we're in South Wistful Vista, Wimp, we can get a cab from here. Sorry I can't tell you where we're going, but it's top secret. Big deal. <laughs> I wouldn't have time to listen anyhow, Mr. McGee. I'm late. I have to dump this load at the Plymouth paper mill and go home. Well, goodbye now. Yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Go McGee. Go on, Wimp. Hey! Who's he driving for, Molly? Let me see. City of Wistful Vista. What? Place paper collection. Oh, no. Hey, Wimp. Hey, oh, cab. Hey, get a cab. Hey, Wimp, call a cab. Cab. <laughs> King's Men and the Cry of the Wild Goose. Tonight I heard the wild goose cry, winging north in the lonely sky. I tried to sleep, but it weren't no use, cause I am the brother of the old wild goose. My heart knows what the wild goose knows, and I must go where the wild goose goes. Wild goose, brother goose, which is best? Take the sky. Wish I had wings so I could fly. I hear the honker and the blue goose too. One went to Canada, the other just flew. My heart knows what the wild goose knows, and I must go where the wild goose goes. Wild goose, brother goose, which is best? The wandering foot for heart at rest. Seventeen, checking in, sir. Truck number nine. Boris Wimple, Wistful Vista. Two seventeen, truck nine, check. What's your cargo? Weight paper, sir. Check. Gross weight. Hundred and two with my shoes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you mean the paper? The four times, sir. Check. Source of collection. Wistful Vista Hospital. Check. Destination. Pulp. Check. Dump it down the chute there and collect your. Check. Check. <laughs> Imagine seeing you here. Is it gone, Wimp? The paper? Gone? Yep. Down the chute for processing, Mr. Y. Oh, you don't know what you've just done. Look, Bud, is there any way I can get down that chute? Can I go down there after that stuff? Yeah, you can go down there, all right, but you'll come out as a bale and a half of grade A newspaper stock. <laughs> well, that's one way to get into the newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> Did I uh, say something wrong? <laughs> Come on, dearie, let's grab a streetcar and go home. We tried. Oh, that's <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say to Doc Gamble, Molly. Poor old Doc. Well, he didn't lose it himself, dearie. It was probably some nurse that... That don't matter. Doc's the head man. And when you're in charge of a job as big as that, you get blamed for every leaky hot water bottle and busted splint in the whole joint. Yeah, 
Jasper. I never see you, Rim. Try to see him. Kate called for his robbery, Nick. Nearly home. Buck up, dearie. Yeah. Oh, now, don't look so whipped, sweetheart. Heavenly days, Dr. Gamble hasn't a friend in the world who would have gone to all the trouble you went to. No. And me with you. To find it. Oh, here he comes, Mickey. Well, I don't care whether he should. Who? What? Oh, my gosh. Doc Gamble. What's he doing riding streetcar? Hello, Dr. Gamble. Sit down with us. Well, hello, children. What have you been doing all day? Did you have a nice day? Well, where we are, a nice day, he said. <laughs> no use trying to act cheerful about it, Doc. What'd the hospital say, Doc? What'd they do? They take your automobile away from you? Did they garnish your car? My car? No, it's in the garage for a checkup this afternoon. Mm. Why? We tried to track it down, Doctor. You'll never know how close we were, too. Yeah, but, well, well, I failed you, Doc. I'll let you down. Who failed what? What are you two talking about? The radium, Doctor. The radium the hospital lost. The three tubes of radium that fell in a wastebasket. What? Yeah. We didn't lose any three tubes of radium. Huh? That was a three-tube radio that fell in the wastebasket. <laughs> you did You As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, it didn't fall. A patient kicked it into the wastebasket. <laughs> Seems he was listening to Fibber McGee and Molly. Awful asthma, Nick. Awful asthma. Change for nerve. Fibber and Molly return in a moment. Here's something pleasant that can happen to you if you use Johnson's water-repellent glow coat on your floors and linoleum. A Saturday rolls around when you'd ordinarily re-wax your kitchen floor. And then you discover that it just doesn't need re-waxing. For water-repellent glow coat now lasts up to four times longer. In spite of hard wear, in spite of spilled food or drinks you've wiped up, even in spite of frequent damp mopping, glow coat stays bright and beautiful. Lady, you don't need to scrub or re-wax a glow coat protected floor nearly so often. Glow coat now lasts up to four times longer because it's water repellent. Give yourself the benefit of this great work saving development. Get Johnson's water repellent glow coat tomorrow from your dealer. <laughs> We got home from that wild goose chase last night. Did you phone the police and report our car stolen? Yep, that saves me a trip way out there in the country after it, see? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. This way, the cops will pick it up and drive it over here for me, see? <laughs> yeah, they just called up, dearie. Oh? And for once in your life, you were right. Yeah, I was right. They're driving it over here, huh? No, you were right. It really was stolen. <laughs> What? Yeah. Good night. Good night, all. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repair and Flow Code, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you?